that clinic for a monthly treatment. God help that poor boy being left alone with those three. Anything could happen, George. they will probably burn down the house. Nothing would surprise me. There'll be wine, women and song going on there for the next 24 hours. You mark my words. And I'll be right here waiting, just waiting for them to put one foot wrong. I'll have the Department of Juvenile Care down on their heads like a ton of bricks. Someone's got to look after that child, George. His godfathers may look like the three wise monkeys to him, but to me, they look like typical low-class ruffians. Mother, will you be home tomorrow night? Yes, I will. Now, will you be a good boy and do as Chris and Gary and Peter tell you, hmm? Mm. Mum, do they hurt you at that clinic? <laughs> oh, no, darling, they don't hurt me. Dr. Evans is a very nice man, a very gentle man. Will you look at this lot? Oh, Gary, I'm sorry. Never mind. You sure you know how to work the washing machine? Yeah, it's easy. You're going to the cricket this afternoon. So I believe. We've been dragging feet along. <laughs> that I don't believe. <laughs> well, we're in a pack position. Oh, all ready. Well, let's get you moving, right. Maria. Goodbye, yeah. Gary. You off? Oh, yeah. oh, who's going to do the cooking while I'm away? Don't know. We'll toss for it. <laughs> Bye, Maria. Oh, goodbye, Peter. Well. Now, all of you behave yourself. And don't forget to keep the door locked when you go out. Oh, hmm? will you stop oh. worrying? <laughs> I know it. Really, after all, what can go wrong in 24 hours? Hey, have fun. Of course. George, I feel sorry for that poor woman. Oh, I know she's a foreigner and I don't trust any of them, but that child's an Australian. He was born here. And she's leaving him alone with those godfathers of his. It's scandalous. A lot can happen in 24 hours, George. You mock my words. A lot. <laughs> saw him, I'll die. A rude creature. I hope he gets a chill in his kidneys in those awful shorts. Gary? Oh, hi, Mrs. Frenchman. Shirts by their tails, not their collars. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. How's it going, Pete? Oh, very smoothly, thank you. I'm starving. Don't hurry, my chef. You can give us up to a yell in a minute. Are you really coming this afternoon? Yeah, but someone will have to explain it all to me. Are you serious? Yes, I am. Now, out of my kitchen. What are we having? Look, you'll see. Out. 
I can't understand anyone not knowing anything about cricket. Hey, Pete! It's okay, I found it. George, he did it again. The nerve of the man. George, you could to just sit there and let that man insult me. George, are you listening? Hmm. After 40 years of marriage, I'm beginning to wonder if you're becoming indifferent. Right, I straighten the hot chair and some dry clothes. Oh, Chris. Come on, let me hear it. I'll go over and just a minute. No lunch and no cricket. Oh. Uh, come on. You can't catch me. Come on, I bet you can't. Come on, you can't catch me. <laughs> good, it's hot out there. When do we eat? That's a good question. Right, ten minutes. Everyone in a pancake eating position. Good, it's the abominable snowman, mate. Oh, funny. What time does this thing start this afternoon? Not a thing, mate. It's a cricket match. Two. Well, I think of all the ways I could be spending Saturday afternoon. Yeah, what's her name? Don't you worry about what's her name. I'll, I'll worry about, about what's her name. <laughs> what, 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 what? I said, where do we eat? I'm ravenous. Patience. I just want to wash up a bit. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Good, Earl. Cheers, Chris. Mike? Yes? Are you in a showering position? I've finished. Well, open the door. Come on, you shouldn't lock it. Open up, open up. Come on, I want to have a quick wash. If I do... Will you promise not to look? At what? George, it's her from the juvenile care department. Terrible driver. You'd think she'd never passed the test. I don't think any of them have seen her yet. Oh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall over there when she walks in. I'll kill him. I will. I'll kill him. What's up? Mike. Mike, open the door. Now, never let me catch you locking yourself in the bathroom again. It's dangerous. Now, come on, mate. I'm in a shaving position. And with my razor. That's the finish. <laughs> no, mate, I am very, very funny about my razor. I just don't like anyone else using it. Sorry, Pete. Can't you ask him to clean it, would you? When he's finished his shave, that is. <laughs> you can give me a yell. I'll be in the room. Oh, my gosh, it's her. Uh, who? Her from the juvenile care department. Oh, charm, mate. For Maria's sake, heavy with a... Heavy with a charm. Well, oh, she's a woman, isn't she? Hey, the floor! Why, Miss Dent, this is a surprise. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. I was really just passing by. And looking particularly charming, if I may say so. Well, thank you. Well, may I come in? Oh, yes, of course, please do. Can I take your jacket? No, it's all right. I'm only staying a few minutes. Oh? Uh, when does Mrs. Varga get back from the clinic? Oh, sometimes at night. Seems like she's been gone a week instead of just 24 hours. We miss her. So I see. Good day, Miss Dent. Mr. Peterson. Uh, I was doing some washing. I, I left the tap on. I, I seem to have flooded the laundry. Great. Something's burning. Hey, did I smell something burning? Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. I was just in the bathroom. I didn't hear you arrive. We were just going to have a good clean-up before we went out. We wouldn't have Maria come home to a mess, would we? Of course not. That's right, yeah. Uh, and just where were you gentlemen planning on going this afternoon? To the to cricket. cricket. You're doing very well, Mr. Fairhall. When you finish this, you can start on the floor. Hmm. 
Hi. Hi. Hey, what's where you walk? Oh, pity about the cricket. Oh, that woman has strictly bad news. I mean, we'd have done it anyway. I've been thinking. You know, I figured we had that woman won over. Not anymore. Will you shut up and listen? So now we've got to win her back again and quickly. I mean, she's going to give us grief whatever she thinks we're bad news for Michael that somehow Maria can't cope. So? So, one of us is going to have to invite her to dinner tonight. You are joking. Who? Well, toss for it. Chris, she's too old for me. They never do, old mate. Well, anyway, she wouldn't come. She might. Your call. Heads. Your turn. You call. Heads. You do realise this is going to cost money? Naturally. Naturally. Oh, come on, that's not fair. Why should it be just me? I don't even fancy her. Take her somewhere cheap. Better still, take her somewhere expensive and order something cheap. A hamburger and beer. Oh, please. No, better still, let her choose the place, then you order for her, right? Not right. Look, you order some cheap wine. You get her as pied as quickly as possible, and when the time comes, you won't even know what she's eating, right? We'll all chip in as well, Pete, that's fair. Yeah, we'll all chip in, right? Right. Right. Gary gave them to me. That's Bubbles, and that's Squeak. Squeeze the lady. She's in a pregnant position. Well, Mr. Fairhall, and how are the Godfathers progressing? Uh, could I have a word with you for a minute? Of course. Uh, Mike. Don't you want me to hear? You still mad at me, Pete? <laughs> no. Look, firstly, I just want to apologise. I just thought that if we got to know each other a little better, and in a different atmosphere, I could convince you that Chris and Gary aren't really so bad. Well, you know. Anyway, would you like to? I mean, the meal's all on me, and you can even choose the place. Just somewhere quiet and unpretentious, nothing too grand. Somewhere really simple, where it's easy to talk. What do you say? Thank you, Mr. Fairhall. I'd like you very much. You would? I would indeed. <laughs> Great. to know when we eat. I'm hungry. Ah, oh, it's so good to be home. I feel as if I'd been away for ages. Mama, we missed you. Ah, oh, did you, darling? I missed you too. All of you very much. What did the doctor say, Maria? Oh, I have to keep going back every month, of course. But they seem optimistic. Well, I'm optimistic. More than that, I'm determined. Have you eaten? No, and I'm starving. They don't feed you at that clinic. Right, well, that's the first thing. Well, you all seem to have managed very well without me. Everything is sparkling. Yeah, nothing to it. <laughs> oh, now, tell me about Peter. How is it that he's having dinner with Miss Dent? Has something happened? Great, thanks. It's a very popular little place. Yeah, so it seems. Oh, thanks. Well, would you care for a drink? Or don't you drink? Oh, only on very rare occasions. Oh, well, house wine's usually tremendous. Um, no. I think I'd like a martini. Very dry. Would you care to order something to drink now, sir? Yeah, one, uh, two. Two dry martinis. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Well, Mr. Fairhall, mm? well, there is a purpose to this little outing. Ah. Well, when I met you, Miss Dent, I felt you to be a, an enormously sympathetic person. Oh, yes. I see. <laughs> well, you see, I knew you'd understand. Oh, I think so. <laughs> ah. Have you decided upon your order, sir? Eh? Yes, I think so. What about some pasta? Oh, oh I don't know. I can recommend the Chateau Briand, sir. Oh, that sounds marvellous. The Chateau Briand for two, was it? Fine. That's fine. Thank you. Well, shall we have some wine? Oh, yes. Now, I, I think a house wine is... If I may suggest, sir, have you tried the verve Clicquot, the champagne, sir? Mm-mm. Mm Too. 
I'll just fix this bag. Jim! Mike! Why aren't you in bed? How can I watch? I'm not sleepy. I'm restless. No, it's late. You're up. I'm big. And anyway, we have to wait up tonight for Peter. I'm nine. Pretty big, but it's not big enough. Come on, let me hear it. Come on, off to bed. No arguments. I'll write you, but you've got to give me a sock. Come on, come I on. I knew you couldn't catch me. Gary, I'm like grease lightning. Okay, lightning, hit the hay. Gary? Now what? I was thinking, if Pete can't make Miss Dent like us, and she puts me in a home, if she did, would you still be able to come and visit me with Mama? And have other little boys there like me? Mike, your mother might be in a wheelchair now, but she won't be there forever. One day she'll get better. And no one's going to put you in a home, buddy. You've got a home, a good one. Anyway, you're the man in the house now. Your mother needs you very much. Okay? Okay. Sleep tight. Gary, can I leave the light on just for five minutes? Just for five minutes. She knew what was happening. Me too. Well, at this very minute, I'd say he's well on the way to mellowing the lady with a bit of the old-fashioned diplomacy and charm. And the cheapest one in the place. about time we discussed what we came here to discuss. What was it? The child. Oh, yes, of course, the child. Can I trust you? Oh. No, I'm quite serious about this. Can I? Yes. You, Lizzie, Liz, Liz, are entitled to the truth. You have a very lovely eye. Oh, Mr. Fairhall. Yes, of course. <coughs> the child isn't a child. What? It's a midget. Oh. A 42-year-old midget lives in the bathroom, locks the door so no one can get in, and uses my razor. My razor that my father gave to me, and I do not like it. That's how I know his little secret. I mean, he only goes to school to get free milk. It's a disgrace. Look, would you kindly pay the check? It's late, I'm tired, and I'd like to go home. I will not. What? I will not pay the check until you give me a budgie kiss. A what? A budgie kiss. Like little budgies give each other. It's perfectly respectable. Oh, Mr. Pearson, please. No, I will not move a muscle until you give me a budgie kiss. Lovely. I think I am a touch sloshed, so I am perfectly willing for you to come home and share my perch for the night. Uh, well, there isn't enough. <laughs> what? There isn't enough money. There must be. Everyone chipped in. What? Well, you see, we all tossed to see who is going to get you. You what? I lost. You certainly did, Mr. Fairhall. That I can promise you. Hi, Miss Dent. Hello. Hi, Miss Dent. It's been quite a night, Mr. Johnson. 
And I now have a very clear picture indeed of the kind of influences that that poor child is exposed to from his so-called godfathers. You all lost the toss, Mr. Johnson, the three of you. You owe me $17, and I suggest that next time you don't send a boy to do a man's job. Oh, and by the way, I believe that this belongs to you. Oh, Lizzie, give us a bungee kiss. <laughs> Brilliant, really brilliant. Imagine should be it all. Look, we sent the upset. Oh, just a bit, Maria, don't worry. Very pretty, I must say. A pretty sight. George, he was so drunk he could hardly stand. She practically had to carry him up to the front door. Oh, fancy that Miss Dent been seen in public with him. The mind boggles. George? It's men like that that make women like me wish we were not women. God bless Mummy and let her get better really soon. God bless Daddy in heaven and God bless Chris, Peter and Gary. As I lay me down to sleep, I pray to God my soul to keep. Amen. P.S. Please God, don't let Pete have a very big headache in the morning. Amen. Here's the file you wanted. Oh, thanks, Molly. For what I owed you. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh come on, Liz. Won't you sit the funeral? But your pride was hurt. Simple as that. See the funny side of it. Oh, they actually tossed a coin for me. And he said he lost. <laughs> anyway, you've got a visitor. Visitors, actually. Mm -hmm. In you come. Hi. Hi. Pete's outside. Oh, was he really? He wants to say he's sorry. Is it okay if he comes in? I mean, I told you to be subtle. I didn't know what the word meant. I'm sorry. I really am, for everything. And what about the $17 you owe? Yep. Gosh, I'm sorry. I nearly did it again. Yep. There we go. $17. Thank you, Mr. Fairhope. Well, I, uh, I guess that's all. Um, we'll be seeing you. Very likely. And how's your head after the weekend? Pete's still got a bad headache. Have you been? It's as clear as a bell. Feels great. Why, how's yours? Oh, uh, marvellous, of course, Mr. Fairhawk. Ha! Huh. What's wrong? <laughs> Never mind. Well, goodbye, Mr. Fairhawk. Yeah, bye. Goodbye, Mr. Steve. Bye, Mike. Hey, you should let your hair down more often. Suit you. Changing my world. 